Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. It's Nikki here and I'm coming at you today with with a video for an easy journal and um, I'm going to give you some measurements um, which will go by pretty quickly uh, but I will leave all that in the description box below this video. So we had three pieces of chipboard there, there were the two covers and the spine. And the covers measure eight and a quarter by five and a half inches and the spine measures eight and a quarter by one and a half inches. And uh, as you can see here, I have just put two pieces of cardstock together, which is going to be the wrap for the, the um, chipboard pieces. And uh, the reason why I used this scoreboard there was to make sure that I got everything nice and level and straight, because that's the base for a good journal is to get everything straight unless of course you make a gent journal when then it doesn't really matter does it <laughs> but with paper with paper um journals you know just uh, try and get it all squared off nicely the uh, metal ruler you saw was an inch wide so i used that um to give me a good start for the base and um i'm just measuring here halfway um between the two papers and that's going to be in the middle of the spine uh, I've sped everything up here because I had great trouble getting the backing paper off uh, the sellotape and um, an hour and a half video uh, was 20 minutes of me trying to get the backing paper off, <laughs> off the tape. Hey ho, <laughs> that's the way it goes. So I'm just getting things straight and level and um, you know the spine is what you work away from so to get everything nice and straight is a good idea. So here I'm marking a quarter of an inch gap either side of the spine um, to allow the covers to to um, hinge to move freely <laughs> and lay flat. So again this is a um, this uh, chipboard piece is eight and a quarter by five and a half, and the spine was eight and a quarter by one and a half, so that's eight and a quarter tall by um, five and a half wide, and the spine one and a half wide inches. That is, I'll convert to um, centimeters in the description box below this video uh, when I write it all down. As you can see, even though I've sped this up, it was a swear word <laughs> to get the backing papers off honestly 20 minutes of pulling off <laughs> so i should have used glue but i thought um it would go quicker <laughs> i thought it would go quicker if i used tape how mistaken i was <laughs> um as we go through this i will actually um uh, talk through preparing the hinge and everything but it goes a bit fast so if you want me to do another video where I show you how to do the hinge in slow motion on white card stock so you can actually see see everything that you need to see and this does go quite fast so hey <laughs> this is the, my third time of recording this video and um, I still struggle for the words of everything I need and as you can see, I'll use the all there to help, try and help get that backing paper off. So here we go, and it's going to be a quarter of an inch. The ruler is still there so that I can get everything level. Keep it all level and uh, you'll get a really nice looking journal afterwards. Oh, look, dearie me. Struggle, struggle, struggle. Honestly, an hour and a half and 20 minutes with this backing paper. And I'm sure you're already fed up of it. And uh, even though I've sped it forward, because it is a slow process, that one, isn't it? If you can hear a chair squeaking, I apologise for that. Um, it's quite a sensitive uh, chair. <laughs> Groaning under my weight. So I'm going around here now to get my inch worth of um, wrap on the uh, cover and I'm going to cut off the excess 
a nice big pair of scissors. Don't try and do it with a short pair of scissors. You're just causing a little bit of um, stress for yourself. With that. It's just marking off the corners properly so that I can see where I'm going with it. Just cutting off the excess. And um, I'm moving about an eighth of an inch away from each corner and I'm marking it just, you know, just to keep it all nice and tidy. And then I'll cut it. Oh, oh no, I'm actually pressing down on the back to make sure that the tape is actually sticking to the chipboard and the cardstock. Breaking the edges around. And I will put tape here on the spine and then on the spine, on the chipboard. And then I will do it on the edge of the paper as well. So that, that means that every inch of the um, cardstock is going to be covered in tape. So this is the easy way to do it, to make sure that the, um, the tape doesn't um, stick out above the paper. There's no tearing this tape. It's, it's like a plastic. The backing is uh, plastic and you can't tear it. You've got to cut it. So my um, thing that I thought I was saving time did not save me time. <laughs> Just because of how difficult it was to get it all off. Here I am snipping the corners, leaving that eighth of an inch there that will wrap around the corners and give you a really nice finish. So I'm going to start with the long edges. Still struggling. I do have nails, by the way. <laughs> oh man. There we go. I've got everything cut out, um, the mats and the design paper and the signatures and everything else, because I started off this um, journal and then realized, well, you know, I should really be filming it. So everything isn't quite um, uh, I can't explain you through every step of it because I'd already started it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, as I say, if you need me to go through the hinge and how to mark it and um, put the holes in, let me know below this video and I'll do another one just on the hinge system. So here we go. Folding down, getting a nice stick, making sure I'm not... Um, Making sure I'm not stretching the paper as well. Folding in those little corner pieces and uh, yeah, just working it down and not stretching the paper. Folding in those little end pieces. Looking good. And uh, the quarter of an inch allows that to be um, folded. So he here I'm showing you um, the holes and everything in the the hinge and I'm putting some paper tape on the back just to just to um, st help strengthen it up. And the hinge is uh, the which is the black card stock is um, eight and a quarter. Sorry, the hinge is eight by four inches, eight inches by four inches. And it's scored at one and five eighths, two, two and three eighths. And uh, sorry, it is scored at one and a quarter, one and five eighths, two, two and three eighths, and two and three quarters. And uh, along the one and five eighths, two and two and three eighths line, um, you make a hole. At one inch down, four inch down, and seven inches down on each of the three um, scores for the signatures. And uh, the other brown hinge um, was uh, for the signatures, and it's um, you s of the eight inches by one inch, fold it in half, and then you make a hole at one inch from the top, in the middle, and one inch from the bottom. And then you can make sure that um, that matches up to the black cardstock as well. So um, here I'm just using some thread and wax thread 
and you go in through the middle, leave a tail, go to the bottom hole, push it up, make sure you don't lose your tail, <laughs> keep hold of it, take the thread to the top hole, put it into the top hole on the um, hinge part, pull it through, And then come back in through the middle hole up into the spine. Pull it tight. No, and uh, so I'm pulling it tight there, and in a second I'll realise that I actually went through the wrong hole. <laughs> if you could see that the black. Um, the hinge, the black cardstock is just peeping up over there. That's because I went from the back um, score into the middle score hole at the top there. So um, yeah, I just had to go back in through it and uh, try again. <laughs> so, so as I say, if you want me to um, do a video on this piece, comment below and I will do a slow down version and uh, just simply of how to make holes in the score line and you know, how to attach a signature in slow motion <laughs> in real time so that you know I can explain it a bit better to you there. So I'm now going to the middle score line and um, yeah again you go through the middle hop into the middle of the um, scores on the hinge to the bottom hole back up into the bottom hole of the signature, up to the top hole, and uh, into the hinge, back up through the middle, and you get thread either side of the tails, either side of the thread that goes up through the centre there, and you just tie the bottom bits, once you've tied it all up, down to that um, to that thread in the middle. <laughs> I was so sure I'd cut this bit out, but hey, there you go. I just had to let the cat out. <laughs> had to get up and let the cat out because he was howling. So here we go for the middle bit. So in through the middle, leave your tail up through the bottom hole. Take it to the top hole, which pulled it through, take it to the top hole and leave that tail, don't let it go through the hinge, and then back up through the middle hole. Back up through the middle hole. Your thread tails come out on each side of that thread, and then you just tie it down so everything's all nice and firm and uh, not going to come undone. And then, uh, yeah. So just cutting off the excess thread there. Just having a look, see how it looks. All looks nice and centered. It's going to be put taped down into the spine there. Giving myself some thinking time here by cutting off the other threads. <laughs> and uh, tape it down, that darn tape. So I've got um, some wider tape here, which is actually the width of the spine, which is great. It's the width of the chipboard spine, so it just works out nicely. There we go. Press it down, press it down. Make sure it's all sticking. that drafted tape off <laughs> and I take a little bit a bit of time to just make sure it's all centered up so I'm just do, doing it again just to make sure that I can eyeball where the middle signature is going to end up on the um, on the board there so yeah eyeball eyeball 
take my time to do it because obviously I want it to be straight. So going through, just rubbing it down, having a look, just make sure that I've got it centred and I have. So um, yeah, what I'm doing is uh, just going it, that into the gap, the hinge there, just to make sure it all goes nicely. I'm going to glue it down because um, this gives you wiggle room to get it all nicely. Never use tape on this bit. Just move, removing the excess glue there, and uh, yeah, I'm just making sure that the covers can actually move. Gluing it helps it, and um, yeah, because you, you've got to get that uh, balance between the hinge being open and, and you know the cover being open and the cover being closed. <laughs> got to make sure that that can move, and the back one gave, did give me a little problem because. Um, yeah, it wouldn't stick down to start with. <laughs> I think the chipboard soaked up all the, all the glue. <laughs> yeah, looking good. And if I have to say so myself. <laughs> I'm going to add a bit more glue to the back there, I think, yeah, because it did just bulge. You might have seen that little bulge there. And um, so, yeah, just got to work it and make sure it sticks down. So I've already, uh, as I say, I already cut these and, and started gluing the, it down and then realised, of course, oh, no, I should, should video this. So it's a back pocket and a front pocket. So, uh, yeah, and then the papers. So the brown mats are eight and eight inches by five and a quarter inches and the design paper is seven and three quarter inches by five inches and they're all the same size. They're all the same size. And the spine is, spine cover is, the mat is um, one and a quarter by eight, the brown mat, and the design paper is one and an eighth by seven and seven eighths. That's what I did for the spine. So here we're going to add the pocket, and the pocket is, the front pocket is six by three inches, and I uh, scored half an inch on it on the three sides. The one long side and the two short sides. <laughs> Just making sure I don't bunch the paper, the design paper up here, which is very easy to do if you're not careful. So you've got to make sure that the scores are actually, um, score lines are actually a little bit wider than your actual design paper. Otherwise it just bunches it all up. And then just uh, glue it onto the mat. I'm using glue because of course, obviously <laughs> it, it, it's faster than the double-sided tape here. So just making sure I get good pressure all around just to make sure that it sticks down. And uh, you just pop it in. Honestly, the um, glue room was quicker, so much quicker than the uh, tape. I could have put this together in an hour if I hadn't st stuck the tape. <laughs> So I'm uh, pressing it all down and uh, taking glue off that seeps out inevitably. I'm going to stick down over here. Okay, so the um, the mat for the back pocket is um, so the back pocket is eight and seven eighths by three inches and some, and the design paper is seven and three quarters by two and three eighths. So eight and seven eighths that's for the back pocket and then I did the score half a uh, half inch on three sides the one long side and the two short sides. And then again I'm going to put the design paper down which is seven and three quarters by five Sometimes it takes me, you know, I sit there and think about it for a little bit. <laughs> it's quite funny that. Gluing down both sides. See how much quicker, 
how far, much faster it goes with the glue rather than the uh, <laughs> double sided tape. Just making sure that it still all fits, even though you know I've placed it several times. reassuring myself that yeah I did get it right <laughs> So the reason why I used the mat like that, the brown cardstock, the craft cardstock, um, is because I printed out the, de the design paper on um, just photo, you know, ordinary photocopy paper, paper, <laughs> paper, <laughs> um, and so it's uh, if you want to glue it in, you'd see the glue through the paper and every lump and bump and you know. So I could have stuck it on black cardstock, but I thought I'd contrast it with the um, brown craft cardstock. That's a little bit more weight to a book, but um, would also add a little bit more sturdiness to the book as well. It's going to make a really, really good notebook. Journal. Just pressing down, making sure I've got really good contact with the glue, giving it a chance to dry off a bit as well. As usual, I will just be taking off the excess glue, making sure the corners are down, just making sure everything is still working, taking off extra glue. I love making journals. So that's the spine piece going on. So the spine is um, eight inches by one and a quarter inches. And the design paper mat is one, sorry, seven and seven eighths by one and one eighth. So I say I will write all the, um, all the measurements in the description box below this video. I could even convert it to centimetres if you like. <laughs> sure to place down. Good contact. Here we go. What I'm doing here now is marking halfway uh, on the back and the front of the cover because I'm going to attach a ribbon to it. And I use way too much. Way, way too much. You do not need as much, as much uh, ribbon on there as uh, I've used there. You do not need that much. <laughs> oh well. I think it's because in my head when I, when I was cutting it, I was thinking I was going to wrap it all the way around from front to back, and uh, but I'd already stepped down the spine, so I couldn't do that. I would have had to take the spine matting off and and um, attach that afterwards. So hey. <laughs> Shoulda, coulda, woulda, didn't. See that? I'm trying to, to tear that tape there. It doesn't tear. So, <laughs> Make sure that's nicely set down. Do the same for the back. So what one of those pieces of ribbon that I um, cut would have done 
So, uh, yeah, duh. <laughs> but I'll have shorter pieces to use in one of my mini mini albums, so that'll be okay. Won't be wasted. You know, putting tape on underneath and above as well so that it helps to keep it stuck down. I was looking inside the um, journal then just to make sure I had it the right way up. I'm going to stick on the back cover now. The brow mat is 8 by 5 and a quarter, and the design paper is 7 3 quarters by 5. If I'd have got, managed to get the titles to work, I would have actually just, you know. I'd have been writing that on screen so you could see. <laughs> Me and my struggles with this editing software is epic. <laughs> it's very frustrating. Almost as frustrating as trying to get the backing tape off that double sided paper, summer tape, whatever. I do you like this paper? It's from Victoria Designs. And uh, it's the um, Da Vinci sketchbook. Just uh, pressing it all down, getting a good stick, and then getting the excess glue off. Oh, my gosh, it's so frustrating. <laughs> back Not too much glue in that one corner <laughs> Smooching it down, making sure it all sticks nicely, getting the excess glue off there as usual. I did put too much glue on <laughs> in places. I do like the image on that back cover. Just to put it on the French, really. <laughs> But hey, <laughs> too late now. So again, for this this one, the the um, brown mat is eight and eight inches by five and a quarter, and the um, design paper mat is seven three quarters by five. <laughs> so I said they were all the same. Access below. Making sure it sticks down. Okay, tidy. I tried to leave this video. <laughs> I really did try to keep my work surface tidy. I do have nails, honestly. Did you see what I did there? Did you see what I did? But it doesn't matter because I'd already decided to put um, Mona on the front. <laughs> Guess what I did? Stuck it down to the tape. <laughs> Dull. Just above his eyebrow, look, you can just see that little rip in the paper there, but it doesn't matter because I'd already decided to cover him over. Don't need 
excess glue off. It's worth just, you know, doing that because otherwise it's, it's sticky. Yeah, excess glue off. So there you go, I decided to, I'd already decided to put Mona on there. I drew it all prepared. I had some tags prepared as well. Just do a little bit of sorting out of the tags there. I should have put them down like that, but I didn't. When I actually glued them down, I changed my mind. <laughs> and because I changed my mind, I then had to go and find some flowers to put on. I didn't like the way it looked afterwards after I stepped them down. <laughs> my screen had gone off and I just clicked it back on and, um, and then saw that my phone was in the list. <laughs> in the view, never mind. So yeah, putting it on. Yeah. And then for some reason I changed my mind. I don't know why. What happened when I changed my mind is that I didn't like the way the bottom of the um, tags were. How they looked. So I, then I had to go and find some flat flowers <laughs> to go on the front cover. Because I didn't want it bulky. Didn't want it sticking up too much. I don't, know, I don't know why I changed my mind, but I did. <laughs> I did. So then I didn't like the line it made at the bottom there. So then I went to grab some flowers. And the only ones I had that were flat were orange, because I, I did have black ones, that black and grey. I thought those would go on there nice, but I couldn't find them, so I had to come back with some orange flowers. And because uh, they, they were a bit too garish, I um, used some distress ink on there, you know, the old vintage photo or whatever it is. And um, just some you know, take away the brightness of the um, flowers. Black, the black and grey would have gone nicely on there. But, you know. It is what it is. I moved my craft room around again. You see, and I can't find anything again there. So I've got to um, sort it out. <laughs> but everything said that they're there together, you know. There we go, hiding the bottom of the um, tags. So there you go, it's a super huge long ribbon. <laughs> I didn't cut it there because I'm going to um, cut it and uh, sort it out a little bit later. So I'm just going to show you the inside there. I want to say thanks for watching and um, please leave me a comment if you'd like to see another um, video with the hinges done in, in slow motion so you can get a good look at it. These, these are Victoria Design Papers and um, yeah, thanks for watching, you've been awesome uh, and wherever you are in your journey in life, travel safely. See you all again very soon. Bye. Thanks for watching. <laughs>